I thought today we'd take a walk through history, Ray. That sounds good. I mean, it's a brisk fall day. Yeah. A great day to check out Green Mount Cemetery here in Burlington, Vermont. I agree. The snows haven't fallen yet, so we can clearly see the grounds and all the monuments. This is a good-sized cemetery. Yeah. Not the biggest we've seen, but it's pretty well-maintained. All right, so what are we looking for? We're here searching for a Revolutionary War hero. Also, the guy who's considered one of the founders of Vermont. He's a fascinating historical figure. We're searching for the grave of Ethan Allen. So keep your eyes open for his stone. Uh, And there it is. (laughs) That was pretty quick. Well, it's pretty impossible to miss, Jeff. It's over 40 feet tall, and it features him holding a sword in one hand and pointing his other hand to the sky. Yeah, here we are at the towering monument to Ethan Allen. But there's only one problem. He's not buried here. Hi, I'm Jeff Belanger. And I'm Ray Ozier. Welcome to episode 168 of the New England Legends podcast. If you give us about 10 minutes, we'll give you something strange to talk about today. Thank you so much for joining us on our mission to chronicle every legend in New England one story at a time. And we do that through this weekly podcast. And we do appreciate it when you share and post a review for us. That does go a long way. We also serve the mission through our free New England Legends app for your smart device, through our website, and through our television series on PBS and Amazon Prime. We'd also like to thank our Patreon patrons for being the backbone of what we do. We appreciate their support more than ever. Yes. These legendary people kick in just three bucks per month to get early access to new episodes, plus bonus episodes and content that no one else gets to hear. If you can help us out, head over to patreon.com slash New England Legends to sign up. Also, be sure to call or text our legend line anytime at 617-444-9683. We do love to hear from you and would love it if you left our show closing on there for us. All right, Jeff, so we're standing below a 42-foot-tall monument with a statue of Ethan Allen at the top. Right. In the middle of Green Mount Cemetery in Burlington, Vermont. Correct. And he's not buried right here. (laughs) No, he's not. All right, then where is he? Well, that is a mystery. All right, let's head back to 1789 and figure out what happened. It's the winter of 1789 here in Burlington, Vermont. General Ethan Allen moved his family to Burlington just two years ago because small-town life suited him much more than the growing city of Bennington that he left behind. Though he's 52 years old, he's already led a colorful life. To many people around these parts, Allen is a hero. He fought in the French and Indian War. He headed up the Green Mountain Boys, this unauthorized patriot militia that organized in this vague area between New York and the New Hampshire territories. New Hampshire was establishing land grants in this region, and New York believed it was their land to give, so there was tension. In 1775, the Green Mountain Boys were instrumental in the capture of the British fort Ticonderoga on the New York side of Lake Champlain, and that propelled General Ethan Allen into the national spotlight. Feeling good about his victory at Fort Ticonderoga, Allen and his Green Mountain Boys, along with Benedict Arnold and his troops from Massachusetts, they head north to capture Crown Point, New York. And then he gets a little greedy when he tries to seize Montreal. Allen was captured and spent two years in prison in Cornwall, England. By the time he gets back to America, the American Revolution is in full swing, and Allen is already hailed as a hero. The Vermont Republic had declared its independence, and now Ethan Allen is involved in the politics of this new territory. One of Ethan Allen's new duties in this region was to serve as a judge in Vermont's Banishment Act. Now, the Banishment Act basically allowed Vermont to confiscate an auction property owned by known Tories, or British loyalists. Allen personally escorted some of these banished Tories to the British lines in New York. It's a dark time. Ethan Allen is instrumental in the formation of this new Vermont territory, and he's eager to make Vermont an actual state in these forthcoming United States. Allen also tends to wear his opinions on his sleeve, which wins him both friends and enemies. When the governor of New York said Allen's actions were unjust because the governor still considered Vermont a New York territory, Ethan Allen responded with a published pamphlet saying the governor's words were filled with, quote, folly and stupidity. (laughs) He doesn't mince his words. No. And those who know him consider Ethan Allen at times kind of crude and rude. But it's a book he published in 1785 that earns him the most enemies. The book is titled Reason, the Only Oracle of Man. Reason was an attack on Christianity and the Bible. 
Allen had a real problem with the power of established churches and especially priests. The solution, Allen proposed, was more of a deistic approach, where man is a free agent in the natural world. The book was a flop in all senses, a critical flop and a financial flop. It sold only 200 copies. Of course, most of his critics were clergy, who were the very target of Allen's attacks. Yeah. But still, in the late 1700s, clergy hold a lot of sway. So that catches us up on this colorful historical figure. He's complex, a patriot, but anti-religion. He's opinionated, but also family-minded. Like I said, complex. So small-town life here in Burlington suits Allen just fine. It's February 11, 1789, when Ethan Allen and one of his workers makes the 25-mile journey northwest to South Hero, Vermont. He's headed in a wagon to visit his cousin, Ebenezer Allen, and pick up a load of hay. That night, there's a small gathering at Ebenezer's house. Friends have come to chase away winter's chill with some lively conversation. The following morning, Ethan Allen and his worker begin the carriage ride home to Burlington. After a few hours on the road, Ethan isn't feeling well. Then suddenly, his body starts to shake. He's having some kind of a fit. Then he slumps over unconscious. His driver knows there's nothing he can do for his employer out here. His best bet is to double time it back to the house. When they reach Ethan Allen's home in Burlington, he's still not conscious. They carry him into his bedroom and lay him down on his bed while his family runs to fetch the doctor. Ethan Allen survives only a few more hours before passing away, leaving behind his second wife, Fanny, and their three children. Four days later, Ethan Allen is given a funeral filled with all the pomp and circumstance befitting a war hero and state founder. Though some of the newspapers extol the patriot as a great man who served the public, his clergy critics have not forgotten what he wrote about them and are pretty quick to offer a good riddance kind of sentiment. Back to the funeral, though. After the public said its goodbyes, the family reports holding a burial at Greenmount Cemetery here in Burlington. Let's head back over there and uh, take a look around. Okay, I can see there's a headstone. Yep, there it is. And it reads, The corporal part of General Ethan Allen rests beneath this stone. The 12th day of February, 1789, aged 51 years. His spirit tried the mercies of his God, in whom he alone believed and strongly trusted. It's worth pointing out that Allen was actually 52 years of age at the time of his death. Also, that's quite a godly epitaph for someone who wrote a whole book against religion. That's a good point. Still, that pretty much settles it, right? He's buried in Greenmount Cemetery right here. I'm not so sure. From here, we're going to jump ahead about 60 years into the future. It's 1851, and not a whole lot has changed in Greenmount Cemetery. No, I mean, there's more people buried here now, sure. which makes sense. Right, but look over there. Notice what's not there. Oh, look at that. You're right. General Ethan Allen's headstone is missing. It's been stolen, and it won't be seen again. And we can only guess as to the reasons it went missing in the first place. Now, a few years later, in 1758, the Vermont legislature authorizes the construction of a grand monument, 42 feet tall, on a majestic Vermont granite column. A statue of Ethan Allen sits atop the giant pillar. Of course, the statue is just a guess as to what Ethan Allen looked like. We don't really know. And the stone at the base reads, Vermont to Ethan Allen, born in Litchfield, Connecticut, 10th January, A.D., 1737, died in Burlington, Vermont, 12th February, A.D., 1789, and buried near the site of this monument. All right, well, that's fair. His original headstone is missing. The massive new monument now stands here. I mean, he's somewhere nearby. P close enough, right? Sure, close enough, except when they were laying the foundation for this massive monument to Ethan Allen, they decided it would be proper to excavate the original grave of the hero and place his bones underneath his new tower. So they looked at the cemetery plot maps from 69 years ago. They see about where Ethan Allen's plot should be, and they dig. And dig. They dig up the whole area and are shocked to find there's no tomb. Pretty soon, there's talk of grave robbers, which has happened in the past, of course, but there's no record of it here at Green Mount. Grave robbers also tend to be sloppy. I mean, once they get what they want, they don't really spend a lot of time covering their tracks. And now locals are buzzing. 
where is Ethan Allen? Another theory comes up that maybe someone close to Ethan Allen dug him up shortly after he was buried because there's no way someone so opposed to religion would want his mortal remains surrounded by all these church-going folks. <laughs> and then the plot thickens when a letter is written to the local newspaper from a man in Kalamazoo, Michigan, who claims his wife's aunt is Aries B. Allen, the widow of Captain Hannibal Allen, General Ethan Allen's oldest son. The aunt claims Ethan Allen was buried in Bennington, Vermont, not Burlington. The only problem with that is we can find no record of Ethan Allen's burial in Bennington short of this letter to the newspaper. Right. It's not a popular theory, probably just a confused old woman. And that leaves us scratching our heads next to his impressive monument to a guy who probably didn't really look like that figure at the top because there's no paintings or drawings of him in life. And that brings us back to today. With no bones or mortal remains to place under the new monument, the folks in Vermont did place a time capsule underneath the base back in 1858. But where Ethan Allen's body is buried remains unknown. The funny thing is, I bet Ethan Allen would love the fact that what he looks like and where he's buried is a mystery today. I mean, this is a guy who lived for speculation, whether in politics or his philosophies or even buying and selling land. Now, the crazy thing to me is that Ethan Allen isn't even the first missing historical corpse we've searched for. Uh, that's right. <laughs> Back in episode 91, we searched for the missing corpse of Governor Enoch Lincoln from Maine. Uh, maybe it's a New England thing to lose bodies. <laughs> maybe. Obviously, history has judged this guy a hero, considering Vermont calls him one of the state's founders. And they erected this giant monument to him. And they look past his anti-religious views so they don't offend anyone. Ethan Allen has been turned into an idea a patriot, a founding father, and we ignore any parts of the story we don't like. We don't know what he looks like, and we don't know where his bones rest. And that mystery only adds to the man and the legend behind it. We love when you legendary listeners get more involved. Yeah. I mean, our super secret Facebook group has almost 2,400 members now actively sharing strange stories and discussion. We get a lot of story leads from you guys, so please don't be shy. Reach out to us anytime. Please do. Also, in the latest version of our free New England Legends smartphone app, you can now have the ability to check in and upload your own photos from the hundreds of locations we've covered so far. Be sure to check that out. And, of course, our theme music is by John Judd. Thanks, John. Hi, it's Jody Maruka from Norwood. Until next time, remember, the bizarre is closer than you think.